I want to go back to, you know, the, the life that shaped the man that I'm sitting next to today. So tell me about the life of the, the Bowler clan growing up in Western Sydney. What, what was it like? We moved over from New Zealand. Mum and Dad were born in Samoa. We moved to New Zealand and then, um, you know, just uh, wondered there was better opportunities um, for a better life in, in Sydney and uh, eventually made the move back in 1997. And first place we moved to was uh, uh, Ashcroft. You know, if you're going to talk about someone famous from rugby league coming out of Ashcroft and then We'll start with Brad Fittler, who, who is well known. I, I was a, um, the only boy in my family. I've got two older sisters and uh, the age gap uh, is a lot bigger. So they, the older two were a lot closer, but uh, they definitely looked after me um, as much as they could. And, you know, both mum and dad, um, well, you call it real life hustlers pretty much. Um, you know, I, I remember days as a kid, dad uh, having two jobs. Um, you know, mum working late hours as well, uh, working throughout the day, and then there was just me and my sisters throughout school, but um, <clears throat> always just did whatever they could um, to give us the life that we, ha that we had and um, never complained about much or anything really because, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it was a, a tough life growing up because they, they definitely made it feel comfortable for us and... Um, yeah, just seeing how hard they they had um, to work, put their lives on hold, allowing us to chase our dreams. Tell me about this place. Yeah, this is pretty much where it kind of started. Um, you know, as a young kid growing up out here, uh, needed a place to sort of just get away and and uh, I guess let the hair down and just enjoy playing footy or running around. And every time we came here, there was a game of touch footy or um, whether I came down here to do some extras, I was, I was always this field here. So yeah, it's, just, it's pretty much a, a pick up game of touch footy that's just been going on uh, for, for decades now. That's amazing. So there's no real organisation. There's just everyone knows where to come and just come and play. Yeah, it was, everything was sort of word of mouth. And, but like I said, you guaranteed there would be a, a game every single day of the week. Sundays, um, there was always a game. Everyone would be at church beforehand, but then somehow just all rock up and then we'll play in touch. So uh, that's pretty much where all sort of, I guess you sort of got to put your skills into practice. And um, it's not your average sort of touch footy game. It ends up being 20, 30 on 30 and then um, it's all about just enjoying and doing whatever works. So this is where the junior Bilo offload ball skills, <laughs> all that was born, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, all, people, all ages are playing, whether you're a six-year-old kid or um, you're 50 something years old trying to hold on to your career. So <laughs> it, was, it was always good fun. It was always good banter getting about, but um, it was more so uh, a place just um, allowing um, I guess people in the area just come and have a bit of fun and um, pretty much stay off the streets as well. I was going to say, do you get in and play touch and how do you go these days? They, they probably <laughs> probably get you, <laughs> probably tag you pretty easily these days, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, when we can. Normally during the off season, we're down here. Josh just uh, as well comes down here. So uh, there's a lot of boys who just come and have a run. And, um, you know, to these guys, it means a lot to them just to see guys who they get to watch on TV um, come and mingle and just enjoy a, a pick a game of touch footy with them. How much was your affection for your parents and being inspired by them? Was that the, did that inform your decision to to play for Samoa at the World Cup? Is yeah, I think it was more so giving back to the sacrifice that they made. Not only them, uh, you know, grandparents um, representing, yeah, or well, aunties, uncles, cousins. Yeah, being able to tell them that I was going to represent Samoa was quite an emotional but special moment for myself. And what about the ride in the World Cup? The obviously didn't start as well, but then to get all the way to the final. Yeah, it was pretty cool there. Eh? Um, like mum and dad, my sisters, my partner, my kids, they were there for the whole journey. So, um, yeah, like you said, after the first one, we were heavily criticised and um, 
I guess it's hard when um, you know you're on the world stage, and you know from that from that loss moving forward, yeah, you talk about that roller coaster ride. That was who knows if that happens again. So having uh, the family there um, to celebrate every single little um, I guess moment each week heading into that finals was um, a special one, and uh, I guess hopefully a memory that will last with the kids forever. So after the World Cup, did you go back to Samoa? Yeah, um, you know, the, the reception that we got, <laughs> as soon as we got to the airport, we landed at like one in the morning and um, once we got off the plane, we were still walking through customs with just the roar that you can hear from inside the airport. But just seeing how much um, of an impact that we were able to create in that World Cup. Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, going back home and seeing the smiles on, on their faces, it doesn't take much um, to make those people happy, but um, yeah, that was definitely uh, one of the proudest moments, I, I think, for Samoa. Were you honoured in some way or had something bestowed upon you or something I think I saw on your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Dad's village. Um, so Dad's a chief in his village. Um, you know, my, my granddad um, as well. And, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to be uh, bestowed um, a chief title while we were over there, and um, especially in, in my dad's village. Um, you know, it was quite a special moment uh, for the family. One thing, I guess, Samoans, Tongans, Pacific Islanders always have in common is that you're always the, the toughest guys on the field to tackle. You know, for yourself, you know, your name's Junior, but I don't think it probably suits <laughs> yeah. you that well. Have you always yeah. been the biggest guy on the field? Was that always you growing up as a kid? I used to think I was a small kid of average size until uh, I was enrolled into a footy team and, and realised that I, I was actually uh, one of the bigger kids. And actually, when I debuted, uh, I was actually 107 kilos. Um, but uh, prior to that, I've always just fluctuated and... Um, sort of just learnt to carry my weight. And, but then uh, I think just the older you get, um, the more mature you've got to be and more professional you've got to be and understand that, you know, um, you know making the NRL, um, you know, it, it's hard. But the hardest part is being able to, to stay there and be consistent over so many years. And, um, you know, I've, I've had my plenty of lessons over the, over the years on... Um, enjoying off seasons and um, how to return back. So yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, one of the biggest lessons was 2017 World Cup, and we were weighing in in the mornings, and uh, they weren't actually watching them. Uh, we weren't even jumping on the scales. We were just riding down whatever. And I think at the time, playing weight was like 123 or something, 124. And um, so when we returned after that World Cup, well, I was at Canberra at the time. Sticky caught us in. Um, as soon as we got off the plane um, to jump on the scale, and I uh, was sitting on the scale 139. Um, so that was um, quite the dramatic, uh, I, I guess, um, change for myself and uh, re realising how much we had in, probably enjoyed that World Cup tour too much. So, um, you know, looking back now, it's, that's probably one of the well, more, more so embarrassing moments um, in the career. but. Um, yeah, one of the biggest, I guess, game changers for myself and looking after myself. This is really a, a family affair. We get here and then you say, oh, that's, that's my sister over yeah. there. And your nephew's just over here. And that's not even planned. They're just nah. here playing. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we talk about when we say, like, just anyone that can just rock up. Doesn't matter who you are. Everyone just wants to uh, chase a bit of, I guess, exercise, but also have a good time just mingling. You talk about the, the down times. When you were a kid, you know, was it easy to get mixed around in the wrong thing out here if you, if you weren't careful, if you weren't focused? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I, I think that was probably one of the hardest things growing up is uh, there's a lot of influences and a lot of, uh, I guess, um, you can say that distractions were probably, and temptations were probably one of the hardest things to, to step away from. And uh, I think the hardest part is saying no, especially when 
Uh, a couple of them are, are your mates as well, and um, you know when you've when you've got a dream that you want to chase, and I think being able to stay disciplined is probably one of the hardest things when when this is just where we grow up. So. If, to have these sort of things uh, keep us grounded, I think it's just having good people around us and this is what it allows us to do. I notice there's a, there's a PCYC just across the road as well. You've been involved with PCYC. Why was that important for you to be involved in that space? Yeah, because uh, uh, that's the first one that sort of was built when I was still in school as well. And uh, what it allowed, um, you know, kids like myself, they allowed them opportunities to get away from those distractions and temptations and um, that's what the PCYC is all about. So why not be able to be in a position to give back and and do um, work with them throughout the year. So I'm quite uh, happy to be an ambassador and quite fortunate that I am in that role. In terms of when you're done playing rugby league, is, is this what's most important but to you, giving back to your community? working in your community, is that what you kind of maybe see yourself doing once you've finished playing? And I know, I know that's a long way down the track, but... I'd, I'd like to hope so. <laughs> um, you know, rugby league, yeah, it's been, like I say, a massive part of my life and majority of my life, it's been all about rugby league. So um, I'd still love to be um, involved in the rugby league world, and whether it's coaching or helping out, um, you know, developing in, in the junior systems, but um, certainly, yeah, you know, to still be a role model, I'd still be um, giving back to my community.